Warm greetings and welcome once again to Slim Talks by Anil Fernandez. As you know, Slim Talks is dedicated to developing excellence in areas of strategy, leadership, innovation, and marketing for your businesses. Today, we'll spend some time to discuss a very important concept, the concept of developing core competence in our organizations. How do we look at our organizations today? Do we look at them as a cluster of core competencies or do we look at them as a cluster of businesses? The difference in the philosophy underlines the shaping of the culture towards developing core competence in our organizations today. So core competence essentially means what we are the best at. It means converting your resource into a capability that gives you a distinct edge versus your competition in the competitive arena. So this could be in the areas of information technology, big data, data analytics. It could be in R&D, it could be in quality, it could be in customer service, where you could really be the best at and create a distinctive identity for your business. In order to qualify as a core competency, any business activity must satisfy three conditions. Superior value or benefits that are unmatched as compared to competition. They are difficult to replicate by competition and they are rare, which gives you a sustainable competitive advantage. The concept of core competence actually came out for the first time in the 1990s through an article by C.K. Prahlad and Gary Hamill in HBR. So at that time, this was the very first time when the concept of core competence just emerged. If you look at prior to the 90s in the 80s, it was all about simplification so that there's a smooth transfer of workflow and we are quick on our actions. So it was about restructuring, simplifying and decluttering. But the 1990s started with a very, very important concept of identification, cultivation and exploiting core competencies. So in this very same article, C.K. Prahlad and Hamel, they give a very interesting case study of two companies, General Telephones, that is GTE, and Nippon Electric, which is NEC. So in the 1980s, GTE was a dominant player in IT, and it was very well diversified across multiple verticals, as you can see here on the slide. So GTE was nearly a $10 billion enterprise with a net cash flow of $1.73 billion. In comparison, NEC was only $3.8 billion in sales with a comparable technological base and not as well diversified as GTE. So NEC was mainly a computer business company, not much experience in telecommunications. So this was circa 1980. Let's go forward and see what happened in 1988 to these two organizations. In 1988, GTE was a $16.5 billion enterprise, while NEC had overtaken to reach a value of nearly $22 billion. GTE was largely a company with a position in defense and lighting products. So it lost its dominance in the area of telecommunications. It diversified and hived off some of the critical businesses as a result of which they were not very competitively viable and NEC had overtaken them. So just look at what happened to NEC in 1988. Quite the contrary. As we saw, NEC notched a value of close to $22 billion and NEC became the world leader in semiconductors. It was well diversified beyond computing to even telecommunications with core competence in semiconductors and mainframes. So why did these two companies, starting with a very comparable business portfolio, 
perform so differently? The answer is largely because NEC conceived of itself in terms of core competencies, while GT conceived of itself in terms of the businesses in its corporations. So as I said right in the beginning, are we a cluster of businesses or are we a cluster of core competence? The answer to this question will help you to build the culture of core competence in your businesses. So let's look at the NEC case once again. In the 70s, the strategic intent of NEC was very clear. We will set ourselves as an organization that is strongly entrenched in computing and communication, which was very popularly known as CNC. So the success was hinged on acquiring competencies in semiconductors. NEC worked very closely to building a strategic architecture that is integrating multiple streams of technology and production capability to strengthen this area of CNC and convert it into a true core competence for the enterprise. They also built a CNC committee of leaders and their groups who work closely together, whose objectives were clearly aligned to the objectives of the enterprise. And they allocated significant resources in the area of components and central processes to strengthen the CNC core competence. Now, Pralab and Hamill, they bring about a very interesting concept of comparing the core competence to the roots of a business. As you can see on this chart, this is like a tree. Core competence are the roots, which lends the business a lot of stability, support, and sustenance. The stem or the trunk of the business are the core products. And the branches are basically the, each businesses of that particular enterprise. And the leaves and the fruits are the end products. So what is the difference between end products and core products? End products are the products that you identify with on the shelf of the retailer and the product ultimately that goes into the market and satisfies the need of the consumer. But core product is a very important concept because this is the intermediary that goes into the development of the end product. Like you take off uh, Honda, you know, the engines what they have. So Honda has got a multiple variety of engines. So these engines constitute what is the core product. And then the assembly of all the automobiles with different structures and models and style are the end products of Honda that you see on the road or that you see on the showroom. But the very thing most important, it is your core competence, which is at the very root of your business. So there are at least three tests that can be applied to identify core competencies in a company. A core competence provides potential access to a wide variety of markets. Take the case of Amazon. Their core competence in the area of technology is unmatched. And this they have leveraged across variety of markets and industries, be it in groceries, be it in entertainment, or be it in cloud computing. So core competence has helped them to traverse multiple domains. This core competence gives you a significant contribution to the perceived customer benefits of the end product. So Amazon has built in such superiority that it keeps on updating itself and keeps on satisfying the customers much better with each new offering. And it is difficult for competitors to imitate the entire value chain of Amazon, which is an integrated set of actions together with its areas of operational excellence, making it truly sustainable for Amazon in a competitive environment. So there are different types of core competencies in business. Examples of these are best quality products. Take Adidas, take Nike. They pride on their quality. Most innovative technology, as we have seen in the case of an Amazon or in the case of an Apple. Best customer service, you take the banking industry or the hotel or the hospitality industry. They have to really thrive on customer services 
in order to expand their domains. You have the largest buying power because you have the economics of scale. Take the e-com giants. Because of the economics of scale, they can leverage with their suppliers. A strong company culture is again a very important core competence because stronger the culture in your company, the better it is for you to motivate and engage your employees. So think of a culture also as a core competence. Fastest production or delivery so that you hit your markets faster and earlier as compared to competition and you get the first mover advantage. Lowest cost provider, you are able to integrate your value chain so that you are able to manage your cost structures and you are able to establish cost leadership. And of course, you have the highest degree of flexibility through your systems and processes that helps you to tide over crisis and navigate across multiple problems. So these are examples of core competencies that we can identify and set a distinctive position for our enterprise in the minds of our customers relative to competition. So why are they important? Because based on your core competencies, you will allocate resources. So you will play to your strength and make sure that you will, uh, that you will allocate adequate resources to your core competencies because that is going to be the currency for you in terms of customer acquisition. It helps you to reduce market risk and uncertainties in the face of stiff competition. It builds your image like an Apple as a technology and an innovation organization. And it helps you to build relationship. You create a very strong ecosystem with your employees who are proud to be working with you and with your customers who are proud to associate with your products or with your service. So friends, thank you very much for joining me on this crucial discussion on building a culture of core competence in your organization. Remember, as I said, ask yourself the question, do we see ourselves as a cluster of core competencies or do we still continue seeing ourselves as a cluster of businesses? So recognize what you are really good at, allocate resources and develop that into a distinctive differential that will really give you a cutting edge over your competition. So friends, please do build the culture of core competence in your organization to sustain yourself in the face of ever-changing competitive dynamics. Wish you all the success in your business. So remember, if you like my content, please do press the like button, subscribe to my channel, please do comment and please do share to the maximum. Thank you and wish you all the successes for your business. Thank you.